So what is digestion? Well, digestion is the chemical and mechanical breakdown of food. What it does is it converts large insoluble molecules into small soluble molecules that then can be absorbed into the blood. Once they're absorbed into the blood, then they can be transported around the body and assimilated into, into cells and, and be used. But we've got to break them down into small enough uh, molecules before that can happen and that happens in the process of digestion. Now you need to know all the organs that are involved in the digestive system. On this diagram you can see ones that are labelled with black arrows are the ones which the food will travel through on its journey through the digestive system. So it goes in the mouth, through the esophagus, stomach, into the duodenum of the small intestine, then the ileum, um, round into the colon, down into the rectum and out through the anus. So that's the journey the food takes. But there's also organs involved that are, we call accessory organs that we need to help us with this process of breaking down food. And those are the ones labeled with green arrows here, the salivary glands, the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, uh, potentially the appendix as well. So these are uh, accessory organs to digestion. So I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to tell you a story of the digestion of a cheese sandwich. It's quite a sort of typical food uh, that you might eat. It contains most of the nutrients that we talked about in the nutrition video, such as carbohydrates, fats and protein, vitamins, minerals, fiber and water. So we're going to look at how the cheese sandwich travels through the digestive system and what happens to it along the way. So stage one is that it passes into the mouth and the mouth two forms of digestion happen in the mouth. A lot of people don't think digestion happens in the mouth, it's just where we put our food and then we swallow it. But both types of digestion happen. Mechanical digestion, where you physically chew up the food into smaller chunks so that enzymes have a bigger surface area to break the food down. And then chemical digestion, which is where the enzymes come along and chemically break down the molecules from big molecules into smaller, more soluble molecules. So in the mouth, we've got chemical digestion going on because in your saliva, you have the enzyme amylase and amylase breaks down starch, a big carbohydrate, into smaller uh, molecules called maltose. So in our cheese sandwich, this is the bread that is now being digested in your mouth before you've even swallowed anything. The teeth are working away to give a large surface area for that digestion to work. The food will be masticated, which means chewed, and it will form a nice smooth uh, ball, which we call a bolus of food, which will hopefully be easily swallowed down the esophagus, which is stage two of the digestive system. Now, no digestion happens in the esophagus. It is just a muscular tube which contracts to force the food down into your stomach which is stage three. So the cheese sandwich is, doesn't even look like a cheese sandwich anymore after the first couple of stages and it's now in the stomach where it may be held for several hours. More mechanical digestion happens here because the stomach is a muscular bag so it kind of churns up the food um, and mixes it around and it mixes it around with two things. Firstly hydrochloric acid which is secreted by the stomach lining. Now, a lot of people think hydrochloric acid is there to digest the food because it's acid, so it must break things down, but that's not true. The acid really is there to kill bacteria and protect us from food poisoning. Bacteria and other microorganisms uh, that are on the food, which are inevitable, uh, there are always gonna be some on our food, will hopefully be killed at this stage before it goes any further into the digestive system where absorption happens. So it won't cause us any, any problem. If there are too many, then you might get food poisoning, you might need to be sick, or it might cause diarrhea. In the stomach, there is also an enzyme. Um, this is called a type of enzyme called a protease enzyme. This one's called pepsin, and it breaks down protein into amino acids. So in our cheese sandwich, it's gonna be the cheese. Cheese is high in protein, okay? And so it's breaking down the proteins in the cheese and releasing in amino acids. That pepsin works really, really well in the pH one uh, caused by the acid. It's a specially, special enzyme that works in acidic conditions when normal enzymes won't be working there. A sphincter holds the food in the stomach until it's ready to be released into the first part of the small intestine called the duodenum. So, stage four is the duodenum. Several enzymes are now added into the duodenum by the pancreas. The pancreas is one of our accessory organs and it secretes a, a juice called pancreatic juice which travels uh, through a duct into the duodenum and it gets released into duodenum. Now the pancreatic juice contains three enzymes, amylase, trypsin and lipase. 
Also added at this stage is bile, which has come down the bile duct from the gallbladder where it's been stored. The bile is alkali, so it neutralizes that acid that has come out of the stomach, which is very important. Bile is not an enzyme, its function is to emulsify large lipids. What that means gives them a bigger surface area for the enzyme to break them down, so it's quite hard to break down lipids. So we've got the three enzymes, we've got amylase, which is going to break down starch further into maltose, we've got trypsin, which will break down more proteins into amino acids, and we've got lipase, which with the help of the bile, will break down lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Then the food moves through the gut via a process of peristalsis. Peristalsis are waves of muscle contraction. So the gut, the intestine, is made up of circular and longitudinal muscles, which work to squeeze the food. It squeezes behind the food uh, to move the food along in a muscular wave. The ileum is the next part of the small intestine. Now, by this point, the food has finally broken down into small enough soluble molecules. Because of the mechanical digestion in the mouth and the stomach, and all that chemical digestion done by all those enzymes along the way. So the molecules are now nice and small, and finally we can actually absorb the food into our blood and start to use that food in our body. The ileum is highly adapted for absorption of these molecules. It, the inside of the ileum is folded into these lovely finger-like projections called villi. So this gives the small intestine a very high surface area for absorption. Not only that, these villi actually have on their surface tiny little microvilli. So the villi have villi on top of them. Each villus contains a network of blood vessels and a lacteal. The blood vessels join up to form the hepatic portal vein, which leads to the liver. So all the food, once it gets absorbed, goes to the liver, and the liver can help get rid of any toxins that are in the, food, in the blood before it goes round the rest of the body. And the lacteals absorb the products of the fat digestion, which go into the lymphatic system. So it goes into a slightly different system to be transported around. So all those food molecules get absorbed in the ileum. We're moving now on towards the end of the story, and we're in the, the large intestine now, and all of the amino acids that got broken down from the cheese and the sugars that got broken down from the, um, from the bread and the fats in the butter from our cheese sandwich, they've all been broken down and absorbed. So all we've got left now, really, is water and that dietary fiber has come from the, the lettuce probably in our sandwich, okay? At this point, we need to absorb the water. So that's what happens in the large intestine, in the colon. It, all the water gets absorbed here. All that's left is the dietary fiber, which is what we call feces. Now that gets stored in the rectum and then expelled through the anus when necessary. That process is called egestion. Shouldn't be confused with excretion. Excretion is the removal of metabolic waste from the body. This isn't a metabolic waste, a waste from chemical reaction. This is just leftover food. So this is what we call egestion. Now it's very important that you know all the enzymes, the class of the enzyme, the name of the enzyme, where you find it, what it breaks down, and what it produces. And this table summarizes that. So make sure you learn that properly. The last thing to really look at is a practical, uh, it's an important one, and it's about how you investigate the energy content in food. Now, food is a total energy content dependent on the amount of carbohydrate, fat, and protein. All of those things can contribute to how much energy is in that food, and we measure that energy in kilojoules. Now, scientists can burn food in a calorimeter to work out how much energy is in it. So when you look at the back, back of a packet of of some food, you should be able to find some information about how much energy is in the food which has been worked out in special apparatus called calorimeters. But we can do a kind of a basic version of that in the lab, and we can do it using water. If we set fire to some food and use it to heat water and measure how much the water uh, temperature increases, we know how much energy was in the food because we know how much energy it takes to heat up water by one degree. So we can do a bit of maths and work backwards by looking at the change in temperature to see how much uh, energy was in the food in the first place. So the way to do this is you're going to have to take your food sample and weigh it. We need to have the mass of the food initially. We then want to place uh, 20 centimetres cubed of water into a boiling tube and measure that temperature of that water at that point um, and record that in the table as well. Then we set fire to the food and hold it carefully on a mounted needle underneath that test tube. And we do this until the food completely no longer, to bur no longer burns. It's completely burnt to a crisp. 
and then we stir the water and we take the final temperature. Using that information, we can then plug it into a formula. Now we know that it takes 4.2 joules of energy to raise one gram of water, which is one centimeter cubed of water, by one degree C. So if we put it into this equation, if we do a look at our change in temperature, so the final temperature minus the start temperature, times it by 20, because that's how many uh, grams of water we had, we had 20 centimeters cubed, same as 20 grams, and we know that each one, it takes 4.2 joules of energy, times it by that, and then divide it by the mass of food we had in grams, that will give us our answer as to how much energy there was in the food sample.